All right, guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Locius. The Locius is a six band equalizer or tone control from Shit Audio. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the build quality, all the connections on the back, and most importantly, what's it do to your sound and how does it affect the frequency response. All right, so taking a look at the uh, chassis itself, it's a nice uh, metal enclosure, uh, lots of nice machining there. On the top of the unit, we have a really cool um, indentation here that actually looks like a uh, spectrum analyzer. Very neat how they machine that in there. Also acts as uh, a cooling or ventilation for the circuit board beneath, so that's pretty neat. It does have the metal toggle switches I'm not a fan of those personally, but I know some people really like them, so those are great. You got the dials on the front, and this is something that is actually a pet peeve of mine, but they're spaced uh, or not spaced far enough apart. They're so close together, your fingers don't actually fit in between the dials themselves, which I find a little bit annoying, but you can control them from the top and the bottom. Obviously, turning it to the left of high noon gives you a reduction in gain. Turning it to the right uh, gives you an um, amplification of that certain frequency response, um, but you have to control them from the top and the bottom. So that's uh, noteworthy to me because if you have it on like a tabletop or your desktop, you're not gonna be able to grab the knob from the underside. Uh, so you need this thing sitting on top of something else to get clearance. If you're using something like a stack uh, of other components from them, you're gonna be good to go. But if you're not, uh, it can be a little bit cumbersome to try and figure out how it best suits your system. On the back, it's rather nice. We do have uh, XLR and RCA input and output. Now, this does not share the same Nexus circuit technology or whatever they coin as their big um, marketing buzzwords as their higher end units where it's doing a proper balanced to RCA connection. So while it will send a balanced signal to the RCA out, I would recommend uh, not doing that in the long term if that was your plan because I do not believe there's proper protection inside the unit to uh, necessarily save your amplifier from whatever your pro gear is outputting in volts. Now, if you know what your DAC's outputting and it's just a regular DAC XLR, you're probably good, but if you're using an audio interface, it's gonna put out eight to 10, maybe even 11 volts into the XLR and then to an RCA amplifier, you're probably gonna overdo it on that amp and uh, put that amp at risk. So that's all noteworthy. Now, uh, obviously most important, I think the biggest thing here is how's it sound? I mean, it obviously looks and feels great, has a nice uh, paint job and certainly is um, weighty enough that's not going to move around on your desk but let's see what the dials do to the audio I think that's a big deal so let's move on to that all right guys so I was really excited to pop the locus on the mini DSP ears just for the fact that when you look at the manual it's really sparse they don't make any references at all to gain factor Q factor or anything like that so they tell you what frequency the knobs are starting to adjust things at but they don't tell you what kind of a boost or how wide that boost will be so what i did was uh, give a good uh, swath of measurements for us to take a look at here in uh, rew and uh, i'll kind of guide you through that now so the first one we're looking at here this that i'm highlighting now this is just the neutral response curve of the lcdx you can kind of ignore the drop off down there between 20 and 30. i didn't have a perfect seal when i did the neutral measurement so kind of is what it is uh, they're big drivers and difficult to seat on there but what we started doing here was playing with the first uh, knob the first adjustment tone control dial and that one the manual says is supposed to be 20 hertz so it's supposed to be our sub bass response really digging low so um, obviously at high noon on the dial you're at a neutral point anything below that's going to be a negative gain pulling it back anything forward is going to be a positive gain or a boost to that frequency response. So looking at when we turn on, this is just taking the knob from noon to three o'clock. And in taking it to three o'clock, it's a pretty subtle boost there, but you can see it's boosting all the way down from 20 hertz, coming all the way up to really 200s where it stops. So you're even getting a little bit of a boost in there at 100, but really your main boost is really from more like 
20 to 80, you're getting a boost there. And th that's okay. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just interesting to see how wide that Q factor is if you play with any other equalizers. Then when we take the setting uh, from 3 to 4 p.m., you get even more of a boost from going from 3 to 4 p.m. than you do from noon to 3. So it's not a um, it's not a linear adjustment. It, it boosts with a little bit of a... As you turn the dial, the, the response seems to get a little bit more emphatic here. So looking at the uh, 4 o'clock setting here, you can see you get a pretty significant bump. It's more of a bump from 3 to 4 than it is from noon to 3 on the dial. And you can see we're getting a really big boost in the sub-bass base region now. And then when we take it from 4 to 5, you get an even bigger or a smaller adjustment there. So that last turn of the knob, it kind of stops right down there at about five o'clock. It doesn't go all the way down at six o'clock on the dial. Uh, and so four to five is pretty subtle, about the same as or slightly less um, of an impact as going from noon to three. But you can see that going across that dial is not even all the way across. So if you've messed with this at all, you already know that and you can now have some reference points. All right, so let's move on here and look at the next dial. All right, guys, so here again is neutral just as a reference point. And rather than doing, just to save myself doing a million measurements on this thing, I only, uh, on the next few, only did th uh, three o'clock and five o'clock. I didn't bother with a four o'clock. I figured you guys were smart enough. You could fill in that gap for yourself. So here, when we look at here, here again, we're at high noon on the dial. And then here we're going to three o'clock. And you see, it's pretty interesting. We're getting a boost now. This is supposed to be the 120 Hertz knob. And you can see we're getting a Q factor that spans all the way down to about 30, 35 Hertz and comes all the way up to 500 Hertz. So it's this big swath there that we're adjusting. And you can see we're getting a pretty good adjustment in there. You're getting a good solid three to four dB in boost all the way across there. So a very significant adjustment. And then if you go from three to five, check this one out. This is probably the most impact this knob, this last turn. Now you're looking at really from about 50 Hertz to call it 200, you're getting in some cases 10, 12 dB of a base boost. So a massive boost peaking right around 125 Hertz, which in some cases, uh, you know, if you're a gamer, that 125 Hertz tends to be footsteps in a lot of games, not all. Uh, certainly more videos coming out in that regard, but uh, you can see this one's gonna certainly make an impact on your bass response there. So, all right, so now that we've done 20 and 120, let's go ahead and take a look at the 400 Hertz knob. All right, guys, here we go. We got the neutral highlight again as a palette cleanser and then going from, here we go. So we're going from neutral and we have it at three o'clock here and you can see we're getting a boost now from starts at about 100 hertz and actually ends all the way at 2k uh, but you're getting again a solid 6 db boost all the way from 200 to 1500 i mean a massive swath again that q factor is very wide you know for messing with 400 hertz i don't really see where that is becoming the identifier it seems to me that actually the most impacted uh, frequency spot would be about six seven hundred hertz but whatever i mean you got to label them somehow and uh, i just wish that the manual had some kind of a q factor in there but it obviously is having quite the impact on your headphones and then here we go this is the five o'clock one you can see again you're getting a massive boost there and again if you're comparing it to neutral you're talking 10 db or more in a couple places now that's not necessarily a bad thing keep in mind a lot of, these are not i'm not being critical of the unit and the and the dials and the adjustments because in some cases it's probably exactly what you're looking for if you're picking up something like this uh, certainly has the ability to impact the eq of the headphone uh, for better or worse. So certainly for better if you know what you're doing and now we have measurements that we can actually see what kind of impact it has. So massive impact there uh, from 200 to 1K. Now let's go ahead and look at the presence knob as they uh, coin it in the manual uh, that focuses on 2K. All right, palette cleanser here with neutral and then let's highlight the 3 p.m. knob. So again, this one actually is a little bit more subtle in comparison to the other knobs. Here going from noon to three, you're picking up three to four dB all the way from, call it 500 Hertz to 
2500 hertz so you're getting a pretty significant q factor again a wide swath and again you're talking to six band equalizer so if you're going to cover the entire frequency range on six bands it's got to have a fairly wide q factor so uh, just interesting to see in practice and then taking this one from three to five is quite the jump again uh, and if you're referring it to you know neutral you're talking 12 ish at your biggest gaps between neutral and the five o'clock knob so a big impact on the presence region there all right guys so now we'll look at the six kilohertz knob which is where we're starting to get into some trouble sparkle is certainly an area where 6k is actually a good point to identify as it's often a troublesome spot for some people who are sensitive to trouble spikes it's a great place to have a knob to actually pull back the frequency response and again if you have a headphone that's really dark a good a good spot to bring some sparkle back to it so taking it from noon to three at six kilohertz it's actually probably the least impactful knob we we've seen so far at least at this point which again you're talking about a very sensitive region so probably a good and safe bet here to have a very small and subtle effect but you do you know getting at about 3500 hertz a couple places in there you're talking four maybe five db so certainly not five db can make all the difference in the world in a, in a region that's sensitive like this so and then taking it all the way over to five o'clock you get a massive bump all the way from 3k to well 10k really you're getting a massive bump from 3 to 10k so that whole area there just gets i mean geez from from noon there where you have a couple spots where you're looking at 15 16 db difference so a massive impact on that dial all right now let's look at the last knob all right palette cleanser again and this is the one that really should be sparkle and air we call this one 16k and moving from noon to three we again get a fairly subtle impact usually in the three four couple places where it's five db db but pretty subtle impact but again, that Q factor spans all the way down to about 6K and goes all the way up to about 18K. So a massive area there. And then if you take that dial and go to five, you're going to get a huge boost in trouble. I mean, this is like turning Sennheisers into bears here. You can get just a massive impact up there. If you're looking in that 11 to 20K region, if you look at that versus neutral, you're talking... 20 db difference so they're really adding a ton of sparkle on that knob up there so again none of this is to be critical of the unit you have a six six band tone control and you want to be able to cover the whole frequency range there's only a few ways to do that the only qualm i really have with it is i wish they would call it out in the manual a little bit more and kind of explain what kind of changes you can see but then again uh doing this kind of testing is a lot of fun so i'm glad they didn't so it gave us something to to work on and, and share with you here. I chose the LCDX uh, 2021 one because it handles EQ very, very well. It was an extremely popular headphone this last year. I have a review coming up on it shortly and uh, I think it's one that people would want to adjust in EQ in certain places and I think they'd have a lot of fun with this unit. Kind of moving on from measurements to closing, what do I think of the unit? I think it's great. I think that uh, it's nice to have that kind of flexibility in your stack. I think it's nice to have something that you can just reach for and have the convenience at your fingertips. I think it's nice that you have something that you can adjust without looking at, hey, what did so-and-so say my headphones should sound like online? So I'm gonna apply that EQ to it. Instead, you can kind of just um, season and flavor to taste right there at your fingertips which i think is super cool and i think more people should do that because i think a lot of people would be surprised at what they actually like and dislike i think a lot of times people convince themselves they like something because they see or hear it online all the time so i love that piece of it i love that you can just handle it all right there i also like that you know if you're setting up like apo equalizer or anything like that you can forget you have an active or you really got to open up all tab all these things to to get to it here it's just right at your fingertips and you can make adjustments based on what headphone you plug into uh, your amp right in front of you now on the downside i would not buy this unit mostly because of the dials themselves uh, let's see if i can get that the dials themselves they just don't have proper spacing between them and i don't I don't like that not only is there no space in between the dials themselves, 
but there's no space between if you put it right on the desktop and the bottom of the dial. So then you just got the top of the knob to work with. So um, personally, it's not for me. Now, if you use any other uh, other products, can can stack them with them, or if you have something that fits real nice where this can be the top item or middle item in a stack, I think it'll work just fine for you. And I think that's great. I love what they did. Um, with the top of the case where it looks like a spectrum analyzer. I think that's clever. It certainly has a nice weighty feel to it and is feels like quality. I love that they're made right here in the States and that they have a great warranty, easy to work with, that sort of thing. But again, for me, functionally, it just doesn't fit exactly what I want it to. Unfortunately, in order to step up and get the features I want, their next model up comes with a remote, which solves all my issues, but it's massive and it's really expensive so uh, that one's not for me either but hopefully this was informative for you guys help hopefully it helps you guys make a purchasing decision if you're not subscribed to the channel make sure you do that soon like and subscribe the video so we can get some more uh, views on it and get this thing boosted a little bit I got some really cool stuff coming up uh, if you've seen or followed me on Twitter I've had a lot of cool gear in house recently and I have a lot of videos that I have to get out so Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. I really enjoyed doing it. Uh, I appreciate you. Thanks for checking it out. And as always, take care.